they quickly started chomping on the trees of New York City, requiring a massive eradication effort. They've got the beetle cornered, they've got it down to on its last of its six legs, but if people suddenly disappeared, that beetle would again begin to spread. And of the five million trees presently in New York City, 2.4 million of them are susceptible to the Asian longhorn beetle. The larvae of these inch and a half long insects are miniature biofuel factories. Fungus in their gut somehow helps them convert wood into energy. This is so unique that scientists have studied them to discover how we might derive ethanol from trees. Once they get into the heart of the tree, they start boring along the length of the branches and they create these dime-sized holes running along the length. Now you can imagine if you've got one dime-sized hole through a 12-inch branch or trunk, it's not a big deal. You get 30 of them and all of a sudden that trunk is a lot weaker. You get 50 or 100 and it's hanging on by a few shreds of wood and the first snowstorm or windstorm that comes along knocks your tree down. Invasive species and extreme forces are beginning to reshape cities around the world. From India to China, from the beaches of Miami to the outer reaches of the Florida Keys and right over the Grand Canyon. And across the desert, Phoenix, Arizona will face a cascading series of disasters. One month after people. The disaster begins as Phoenix is invaded by a heat wave set in motion by the people who once lived here. By paving the desert, the builders of Phoenix increased the area's average temperature by 15 degrees Fahrenheit. It's been as hot as 122 degrees here in Phoenix at our airport with the tarmac just blazing. Concrete absorbs about 60% of the sun's heat and light, but asphalt can absorb 95%, and because of its density, retains much of that heat even after dark. We have what we call an urban heat island. When the sun goes down and that air is trying to lift from the pavement, it still stays really, really warm. That heat speeds up the evaporation of the area's precious supply of water. In the time of humans, people made the desert bloom with treated wastewater. This lake behind us is a man-made lake built by bulldozers coming in, laying down rubber plastic materials, and then adding more water to keep the lake at a constant level. So this is the water that comes from your dishwashers, your shower, your sinks. It goes to the treatment plant, and then it is treated and then used for landscaping, for irrigation, and discharged also to many of the rivers. But without people, the wastewater plants have all shut down. Things are going to die, and it's going to get pretty brown around here very quickly. If the wastewater treatment plants stopped operating in a Phoenix without people, thousands of these man-made lakes would dry up within a matter of weeks. six months after people. The Phoenix lakes have evaporated. Next will be the rivers. The riverbeds will be so dry that the sand will blow away and the riparian vegetation, the trees, the animals, would die from lack of water. In a world without people, the desert will regain its territory. As Arizona dries up, water floods other cities and undermines great towers. While elsewhere, alligators fight to defend their territory from the invading pythons. What will happen when these monsters clash? It's one year into a life after people. Alligators still rule the Everglades. 
but the invasion of Burmese pythons is heating up. And pythons have the advantage of size. The pythons can get very large, 25 feet in length. They eat just about anything they can catch. Anything includes alligators. In 2005, researchers in the Everglades discovered the aftermath of a grisly attack in which an eight-foot alligator had been devoured by a 14-foot Burmese python. That says something. If this python is so hungry that it's going to eat an eight-foot alligator, only six feet less than its length, then it's pretty hungry. But alligators don't give up without a fight. What happened in that image was the alligator was eaten. It was such a huge and uncharacteristically large meal. This python couldn't move after he ate it. And another alligator came along and bit a hole in the python. A year after people, the half a million native alligators still outnumber the 30,000 invasive pythons. But they will not do so forever. Eventually, the pythons will outgrow the alligator and become our top predator. All around the world, invasive predators and extreme forces are transforming our cities. In Shanghai, the Oriental Pearl Tower rises 1,535 feet into the sky along the Huangpu River. The third tallest TV and radio tower in the world, it also housed a hotel, a shopping mall, and a revolving restaurant. In the time of humans, more than 3,000 high-rises were built in Shanghai in less than 20 years. By 2003, the weight of the buildings was making Shanghai sink by more than half an inch a year. In a life after people, an invasion of water from the river may be the tower's greatest threat. Five years after people. Like Shanghai, Miami's fate is tied to an invasion of water. Beneath the waves that are eating away at Miami's coastline, dolphins that once swam among humans will learn to use...